good late afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Holly and you're watching Calcine TV live from Sydney. This is the last show of the day, the last trade. And there's no better way to wind down the day than with today's market close commentary. So let's dive straight in. Well, the Australian share market ended at low for the second strength session on Friday as investors awaited the speech by Fed Chair Jerome Powell. The comment by U.S. Fed officials to speed up the tapering of the economic stimulus ahead of the highly anticipated annual economic symposium also left investors jittery. Adding to it, though, mixed corporate earnings and a deadly attack in Afghanistan also spooked market sentiment. Some major companies like West Farmers, Linus Corporation, Resolute Mining, BWX, NextDC and Maine Pharma announced their earnings report this morning. The ASX 200 closed 40.70 points or 0.54% lower at 7,491.20, crossing below its 20-day moving average. During the day's trade, the index declined by as much as 0.7% to hit an intraday low of 7,477.80. The market breadth, indicating the overall strength of the market, was weak as 9 of 11 sectors ended in the red. The utility sector emerged as the worst performer with a 2.2% loss, followed by materials, which fell 1.5%. Among others, the tech and healthcare sectors also ended with over 1% in losses. Meanwhile, consumer staples, energy, industrials and financial sector also settled lower. The telecom sector emerged as the top performer with a 0.8% gain, pairing previous session losses. Consumer discretionary sector also settled in the green with a 0.4% gain. On that note, let's shift our lens on over to the top gainers and losers of the day. Well, among the individual stocks, Australian health supplements company Blackmores emerged as the top gainer by rising 15%. The Vitamins Group reported 90% growth in net profits at $28.6 million for the 2021 financial year. It also announced to pay a fully franked final dividend of $0.42 cents a share. And some of the other notable gainers were coal miner Whitehaven Coal, resource firm Aluka Resources, retail travel outlet Flight Centre Travel Group, and domestic carrier Qantas Airways. On the flip side, though, software company Appen was the top laggard with a 21.35% loss. Some of the other worst performers were superannuation business Link Administration, infant formula company A2 Milk, financial services firm IOOF Holdings, sorry, and Platinum Asset Management. Moving on now, let's focus on the shares that hogged the limelight today. Shares of investment conglomerate West Farmers dropped as much as 3.2% despite reporting robust earnings. Based in Perth, the company reported 40% growth in the 2021 financial year and revenue has grown as well at 10% in the last fiscal. Boosted by strong earnings, the group declared a fully franked final dividend of $0.90 cents a share. And adding to it, the company has also posted a return of capital of $0.200 cents per share, representing $2.27 billion distribution. And shares of gold miner Resolute Mining dropped as much as 4.5% on disappointing earnings. Revenue dropped by just over 14%, with gold sales of 150,503 ounces at an average price of 1,723 per ounce. And shares of Linus Rare Earth declined as well as much as 4.5% after releasing its earnings report for the financial year ending June 30th. The mining company has reported a record profit in this year compared to the loss of $19.4 million a year earlier. Revenue rose 60.3% in the last fiscal year. The robust earnings was driven by strong cost control measures and favourable market conditions. Although the company did not declare any dividends for the 2021 financial year. And the share price of home entertainment retailer JB Hi-Fi declined 1.9% after its company's CEO transitioned. In an ASX update, the e-retailer said that the new chief executive and managing director, Tony Smart, has joined the office, effective from today. 
Smart, who previously headed the good guys, will replace the group chief executive officer, Richard Murray, who left the company for a new role. And shares of natural beauty and wellness business BWX has been placed in a trading halt pending an announcement. The company, which owns makeup brands Sukin, Andalou Naturals and Mineral Fusion, are to acquire a 50.1% stake in GoTo Skincare for around $89 million. According to the company, GoTo will independently operate and leverage BWX expertise and capabilities in certain areas. The deal will be funded via an $85 million fully underwritten institutional placement and a $15 million share purchase plan. And shares of medical device company Cochlea tumbled 2.2% following an acquisition announcement. The company, engaged in the manufacturing of hearing devices, purchased medtech diagnostics company SIA. The diagnostics group has raised $34 million from top-tier investors, including Cochlea, multifamily office EWM Group, SG Hiscock and impact investor Giant Leap. Shares of the software firm Appen recorded a second day of losses after posting disappointing earnings. The stock declined by as much as 8% after falling over 19% in the intraday trading on Thursday. The tech company has reported over 50% declines in profit for the first half of the year, and the revenue also dropped 2% to $196.6 million. Despite reporting weak earnings, the company declared an interim dividend of $0.4.5 cents a share in line with the dividend paid a year ago. And shares of Qantas Airways continued gaining momentum for the second day after releasing its 2021 financial results. The share price of the carrier rose 2.2% after surging over 3% in the previous session. The country's largest carrier revenue fell 58.4% to $5.9 billion, and the airline did not declare any dividends for the year as travel restrictions impacted businesses. It expects to resume international services by the end of this year, though. And the price of Maine Pharma tumbled a staggering 10% after its loss widened in the 21 financial year. The rise in loss was attributed to intangible asset impairments worth $229.3 million, which occurred in the first half of the year, while revenue fell by 12%. The share price of engineering services provider Simic Group rose 0.8% in, in the intraday trading following an ASX update. The group company UGL has bagged a contract for the operations of the Auckland Passenger Rail Network in New Zealand. The company claimed the contract will generate revenue of more than $600 million over an initial term of eight years. And the contract includes operating and integrating rail systems and maintaining rolling stock and other support systems for essential transport networks to Auckland Rail Network. And before we get to our next segment, just a short break on Calcine TV. Hi there, James Preston for Calkine TV. Are you into gaming and virtual reality? Does AI and the endless possibilities it entails capture your interest? Or are you constantly trawling through the web to try and discover the latest updates and innovations in the tech space? Well, let us do the work for you. From the latest product launches to shocking affairs on the World Wide Web, exclusive interviews and information about the top companies like Apple and Google to brand new tech startups vying for your attention. Calkine's Tech Beat has the latest in what matters in the world of technology. Join me every single Thursday on The Tech Beat, exclusive to Calkine TV. Welcome back to The Last Trade. I'm Holly Shields reporting to you live from Calcine Studio in Sydney. In our next segment now, a look east towards the Asian market performance. While the Asian markets experienced a mixed day of trading today following weak cues from Wall Street, as investors turned cautious ahead of the US Fed Chairman Jerome Powell's speech 
at Jackson Hole Economic Symposium later today. The rise in geopolitical tensions after the Kabul bombings also kept investors sidelined. The Straits Times Index in Singapore was the worst performer in the region with a 0.8% loss. It was followed by Japan's Nikkei, which dropped nearly 0.5%. In a similar trend, Indonesia's Jakarta Stock Exchange traded lower by 0.4%, while South Korea's Kospi declined 0.1% as well. And India's BSE Sensex edged lower in the opening deals. And moving on to the US now, Wall Street ended lower in the overnight trades amid fears of a faster tapering of the bond purchase program, while the blast in Kabul also injected volatility into the market. The Dow Jones ended 0.54% lower, the S&P 500 dropped 0.58% as well, and the Nasdaq Composite settled with a 0.64% loss. In the last segment of our show now, let's have a quick look at the crypto market performance. While cryptocurrencies were trading lower during the Asian trading today, as investors remained sidelined ahead of U.S. Federal Reserve's annual economic policy symposium. Although Bitcoin witnessed moderate price turbulence as it heads into the monthly options expiration. The price of the coin, the world's largest crypto by market cap, fell nearly 2% to trade at around $47,000 U.S. And Ether, the world's second largest crypto, also fell nearly 2% to trade at around $3,100 US dollars. Cardano, the third largest crypto by market cap, tumbled nearly 5% to 2.53 US as well. Meanwhile, other known digital coins like Dogecoin, XRP, Stellar, Uniswap, Loatcoin, and Bancor also witnessed a selling pressure in a subdued trade. In a major boost to the crypto market, Cuba's central bank passed a resolution to regulate the use of digital coins in commercial transactions. In a statement issued on Thursday, the Cuban central bank stated it may authorize the use of certain virtual assets in commercial transactions and license virtual asset services providers for operations related to finance, exchange and collection or payment activities. Well, that's all for now in the last train. With our existing operations in Australia, New Zealand, the UK and Canada, Calcine Media has launched its operations in the US markets. Every day on our first show, The Global Market Roundup, you can get the latest and most important news from the US, Europe and the Asia-Pacific markets. So on that note, I'll see you on Monday at 10am live from Sydney. It's been Holly Shields for Calcine TV.